Welcome to the video channel of EE News Europe. Today we have a Skype meeting with Jan Jon Boom. And Jan is the co-founder and CTO at Edge Impulse. And he visited the Tiny ML Summit in San Jose this week in California. We will hear about his findings and hope he will bring us to the edge of machine learning. Good morning, Jan. Thanks, Wissa. <laughs> Can you bring us to the edge of machine learning? Yeah, I certainly hope to do so. Yeah, <laughs> no, so yeah, yeah. So just the two day stint here at the Tiny ML Summit was uh, was really interesting. Originally planned to be in San Jose, but okay, um, it was so over so oversubscribed that they actually had to move to an airport hotel uh, near uh, SFO Airport. Okay, so they had three hundred people on the waiting list. Three hundred so people, lots and lots of interest. What what sort of people are coming there? You know, are technicians, CEOs. You know, what, what, what sort of people should be interested in this sort of summit? So I think originally the Tiny ML Summit um, was was growing out of a research community. Mm -hmm. So last year at the Tiny ML Summit, it was it was lots of papers, lots of researchers going around. Um, this year, the I think the audience has grown a lot also in professionalism. So we see quite some businesses um, doing uh, neural network accelerators for, for small devices. We have companies that actually have products okay. coming to market, um, but still a, still a big research bias, right? This is a very new field and people are trying to like, find out how to get the most efficient neural networks running on the least amount of hardware. Yeah. And that is a very interesting research field. Yeah. So uh, uh, explain for in, in layman's terms, you know, we have, uh, we, we have sensors, you know, you can have all yeah. sorts of um, uh, physical things measured. But TinyML is, is different. What, what is the difference between the traditional old sensor sending some data and the TinyML or the machine learning at the edge? Yeah, so if you look at like how we currently deal with, with sensor data, you do some signal processing at the edge. Um, maybe if we have vibration data, a couple of fast Fourier transforms, um, and then you send that conclusion over. And we're kind of limited in the type of analysis that we can do on these devices, because I'm getting maybe the output of my fast Fourier transform is a is a value, and then I have a threshold set, and if it's above that threshold, probably something weird is going on, and that's what I send over. Um, and that's kind of all we can do, because if you look at lots of these small devices, they're very either power constrained, so mm -hmm. they need to run off a battery for a long time, or they're bandwidth constrained, um, so they run over a network that doesn't have Lots of lots of bandwidth to actually send all the raw data over. Sure, um, and that kind of limits the the number of high value use cases that we can tackle. If you have a let's say a sensor for condition based monitoring in a factory, and you want to know when a machine is breaking, right now these have very high quality MEMS um, accelerometers, mm -hmm. um, and they have pretty good process, uh, pretty good pretty good MCUs on them, maybe capable of doing forty million instructions a second. But then what we actually send over is just the the peak motion once an hour because that's the only thing we can actually send over the device without I, I understand, the bandwidth. I understand. Device. And machine learning actually allows you to do some of this analysis and interaction pro probably with the process yeah. right where the yeah. sensor is. Yeah, so kind of what we do here is that I see like three different uh, strains. So it's either classification, so what is going on right now, anomaly detection, is this out of the ordinary, and forecasting what is going to happen. And with machine learning, we can kind of answer those questions directly on the device. Okay, um, but, uh, a lot of people are mixing up machine learning and artificial intelligence. These are yeah. different subjects, I think. This is not artificial intelligence, I believe. My, my feeling is that artificial intelligence is everything we haven't achieved yet. And then the <laughs> moment that we actually do it, we call it machine learning. <laughs> okay. yeah. But yeah. At its core, my field, machine learning is is actually very close to what we've been doing on embedded systems for a very long time. It is a combination of signal processing, and then instead of just sending threshold values, we do some matrix multiplications based on things we learned mm -hmm. before, and that's it. It's just mathematics. Okay. Um, okay. So and that, AI seems to be like a more overaching goal. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a, a, a good summit. I, I I understand from you, 300 people showing up. 
this is not the end, I think, you know, next time there will be 500 people. But what, what are the plans with Tiny ML? Is it going to be a sort of a brand? Is it uh, going to be a summit? Is it going to be a movement in, in the industry or? Yeah, so it was actually more than 300. So it was 300 people on the waiting list. So I think in total, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's mental. Yeah. Um, my feeling is that it's a bit of a, we're still trying to figure this out, like how IoT was, was kind of this term that meant something different for, for everyone um, 10 years ago. That is something that we have here. So my feeling is it's kind of a research area where lots of people are flocking in. Um, and we're trying to drive this from software side. There's other people that, I see it as like a big brick wall, hmm. which is we want to do machine learning on these devices and everyone is trying to hammer against this wall. And as, as long as as many people do it at the at different points in this wall, we finally made, managed to break it down, and then we we can progress as a as a community. Okay. So it's really a community right now. The summit is the the most important one. There's also monthly meetups here in the Bay Area, um, and we try to set we try to set something up in the Netherlands as well. But we we we, 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 we will follow the development. You are also yeah. the founder and CEO of Edge Impulse. Yeah. A, a company active in machine learning at the edge, I think. <laughs> that is, yeah, it's kind of in the name. Yeah, yeah so for me, uh, uh, both me and my co-founder are former ARM uh, engineers. Um, so while we're at ARM, we're already working with, uh, with the machine learning group on scaling down machine learning algorithms, not just neural networks, but all kinds of algorithms to run on Cortex-M class devices. Um, and we saw that the initial work that we did was kind of making the mathematics behind this really fast on these uh, on these constrained microcontrollers. Once that initial project was done, we realized that to actually make, to actually build an ML model and run that on the MCU, there's much more that we need to tackle. We need to data capture, uh, labeling of data, um, monitoring performance, kind of this whole life cycle mm -hmm. around it. So we decided to spin out of ARM and, and build a company to do that. So we see ourselves as a tiny ML lifecycle company. A t a t tiny, tiny machine learning, tiny, uh, yeah. tiny company, but big plans I, I see for the future. So that is good, yeah. it's good to see. Well, you know, let's leave it with this, you know, we will certainly hear a lot more about uh, tiny machine learning and what it is and what the possibilities are over the next month or years. I hope to catch up with you at some point uh, over half a year and see how the new developments are. And uh, well, good yeah. luck, good luck in the Bay Area, good luck with your company, and hope to see you next Thanks time. Thanks a lot, Thanks. Thank you, thank you, bye bye. <laughs>